How's it going guys? This is Riley from Tactical Edge and today we are talking about beginners and their blasters. So this episode we're going to be looking at a nylon V2 gearbox housing and in the second episode I'm going to be going over a metal V2 housing. Just the basic differences, what you can and can't do with them and what you can and can't put in them. So this is just a V2 nylon housing and it is, can go into a Gen 9, a J10 and probably many other things if you could get them to work or you heavily, heavily customize them. Um, so we've got a nice nylon housing. I've never seen one break or shatter or have any real problems. Um, you've got your basic base brass cylinder, 1.1 spring and all plastic gear internals. Um, so let's just get it open. So I'll take the spring retainer out. And you got your 1.1 spring. Now I'll just get these screws out. Just gonna take these screws out and I'll show you guys what's inside of the housing what it looks like and we'll discuss some things over it and probably basic to intermediate to advanced upgrades that you can do to them depending on how you feel and what you would like and all like that it, it, it's every blaster is very highly customizable to you to your taste and to what you want or would like in it or would like it to do like of course there are some boundaries as always but you know you can do the best you can to it all right so we've got all the screws out now we're just going to take off the housing Oop, i forgot a screw that's my bad cool take this off now we have this so if you guys are following along and opening it for yourself, do be wary of the anti-reverse latch and spring, which if you don't know what that is, it is this. So the spring just sits on like that. Maybe any reverse latch. There's a bevel gear, there's a sector gear, there's your spur gear. Um, so in here we have our trigger block, our trigger, uh, internal like cut off lever for the trigger so that's how it does it's semi and uh, safe as well you got your mag terminals your nozzle your tapper plate your cylinder head uh, your cylinder and you've got your piston and piston head and o-ring and that's really about it that's all the uh, parts names you also have your spring uh, return spring as well that's pretty much all the parts names. Um, right out of the box, I mean, they're fine. They're, they're great to use. But if you're wanting just a little bit more uh, FBS, I would definitely, re like as a beginner, I'd definitely recommend putting a green O-ring on your piston head. I'd recommend, look, it's got a 1.1 spring. These are nylon gears. I would probably recommend putting a 1.2 spring in, that would probably be good enough for the nylon gears. If you want anything bigger than a 1.2 spring, you're probably gonna have to put metal gears in. Now, I would probably put a 1.2 in, a green o-ring, and just do up the cylinder head and cylinder, just with some plumber's tape, or stretch the o-ring, just to make a better seal. Make sure the nozzle's glued on, <clears throat> put some lube in the cylinder, and seal it all up, put a 1.2 and a green o-ring and you're looking at a lot better FPS. Or you can do the spring and the o-ring and put a metal barrel in instead of a plastic one and that will also bring up the FPS quite a lot. So out of the box, these do like 230 to 240. Uh, with those basic upgrades, you're probably looking at like 260, 270. Now for intermediate upgrades, again, that would probably be uh, I would say erring. I would also put metal gears in, uh, a metal teeth piston, 
so it's not plastic. So if it's plastic on metal, it will definitely uh, strip and seize. So you want metal on metal, of course. So I'd put a metal tooth piston in, metal gears, a green O-ring. I'd probably put an M90 in. So an M90 would be great. Um, it would give you more FPS, but M90 is a lighter spring, so that's more for speed. So if you're looking for more of a speed build, I would definitely say an M90 would be better because it gives you enough torque in the spring to give you this power, but it's also light enough to do rapid fire, like uh, rate of fire, a lot better. But if you're looking for power, I would say an M100. If it's above an M110, you're looking at some problems. Now that's a little bit complex for, for, for beginner people, but it can get a little complicated with spacing and short stroking and stuff like that. But I would just stay safe, M100 or an M110, and that would definitely, definitely give you your power and the FPS that you need from a Lernic spring. Um, metal gears, metal piston, O-ring, and I'd probably say stainless steel barrel. You can use a black alloy barrel, but the difference between the two is the diameter. So the stainless steel one has a tighter uh, inner diameter than the black one. So because it's tighter diameter, it's tighter around the gel circumference wise. So it gives you better FPS and better accuracy. So I definitely recommend stainless one than the aluminium one. But that's completely up to you guys. Now for an advanced upgrade, that would probably be like the intermediate one, but putting in silver wiring, a Lonex trigger block, better tapper plate, probably a better cylinder for um, air pressure wise, putting in a MOSFET, that's more advanced. Um, putting in a MOSFET or doing HPA, now those are becoming very, very popular lately. Um, it's all really up to you, but for, for beginner people, this is the gearbox, this is what's in it, this is what the parts are called, and these are the steps that you go to do them. Um, but that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, that's the um, housing. Uh, I've never really seen the brake, but I have seen that if people changed the cylinder head to a metal one, these little uh, pegs that clip into the cylinder head uh, do tend to break off. So because the cylinder head isn't really designed for it itself, they kind of wobble and then they crack and snap off and those crack off. That's probably the only thing I've seen break. Um, I really wouldn't recommend a metal cylinder head or nozzle. I'd keep it stock or put a yellow palm cylinder head and nozzle in. That'd be a lot better. Um, you can have a metal piston head as long as it's hitting something nylon. You'd rather have metal hitting nylon because the nylon on the back, the sorbo pad, would absorb the power and the pressure from the metal piston head. If it's metal and metal, that's where the damage happens. So I would just clear safe and either and have nylon and nylon or nylon and metal. That's absolutely fine. Um, as I said before, you want to have uh, metal and metal teeth. You don't want to have metal and plastic because that can cause problems, especially on your motor. You want to have a metal pinion gear, not plastic, because that can also cause problems. If you're going metal gears, you want a metal anti reverse latch, of course. Um, I mean, that's pretty much it for parts wise and do's and don'ts. Oh, I'd also say if you're going a really high speed build, like 13 to 1s, 16 to 1s, something of that nature, I would definitely really recommend uh, buying double groove 8mm Lernex bushings. They're really, really good. It's like a bushing bearing, so the outer bit is like a bushing that sits in there, and the internal bit is a bearing that just spins around. Uh, and because of that, and because of how, uh, how high speed it's going, because of how fast it's going, uh, the if it's shimmed correctly, it won't be as bad, but if it's not shimmed correctly, the gears, because they spin so fast in like a bushing, this is a bushing, because it spins so fast, it gets really hot and gets a lot of heat in there. And um, it starts actually melting the housing and then the bushings come out and then you gotta get a whole new housing. Where if you have a bushing bearing or a bearing, because it's got the internal bearings, it, it, it basically cools down the gear. So you want it to cool, get, cool down the gear um, so your housing doesn't melt or your bushings or your bearings don't come out. 
and it doesn't cause other problems because sometimes if they come out you can stuff up the piston or your wiring or the trigger or pretty much really anything so i'd really uh, advise investing in double grip bushings they're probably my favorite i've never really had a problem with them um that's pretty much it guys that is the basics of what i wouldn't, wouldn't recommend on a nylon housing for beginners um, stay tuned for the next episode as I'm going to be going over a metal gearbox housing and what I would and wouldn't recommend and what to do for beginners as well for our APS line or anything of that nature and um, yeah I'll see you guys in the next video so I hope you guys uh, like this video please leave a like and comment down below make sure to subscribe hit that notification bell and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video thanks guys bye